Today we're going to do something a little bit different. I have 40 books behind me that I want to organize to put inside of my Notion bookshelf. So what I need to do is go through these 40 books and organize them. There's going to be three piles. So I want one pile for all of the books that I've already read, but I just need to put them inside of Notion and I need to give them a star rating between one and five. The second pile is going to be for all the books that I'm going to read in 2022. And the third pile is kind of everything else. The books that maybe I already have in my bookshelf that I don't want to put in my bookshelf. There's probably only a few of those. So let's just get right into it. The first one is F. Scott Fitzgerald's The Beautiful and Damned. This is part of a collection of classic books that I ordered on Amazon because I want to read more classics in 2022. And I don't really read a lot of F. Scott Fitzgerald. I've only read The Great Gatsby. This is going to be the second one. This is for 2022. The next one is On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Vuong. This is a novel that I was recommended very highly, so I'm going to read that in 2022 as well. The next is, I believe, Short Stories, The Bloody Chamber by Angela Carter, 2022. And this one is one that everyone's recommending everywhere on the internet, and that is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. This is one of those books that if I were to look at the cover and even read the description, I probably wouldn't have bought it. But because everyone's talking about it, I figured I need to read it. So 2022. The next is Season of Migration to the North by Tayeb Salee. This is one I've already read, but it, I, it might be in my bookshelf actually. I'll have to check. If it's not, I'd probably give it like four stars. Okay, so the next book is James Baldwin's The Fire Next Time. I've already read this one as well, but it is not in my bookshelf in Notion, so I need to give it a rating, probably four stars as well. The Summer of 1787, The Men Who Invented the Constitution by David O. Stewart. This is one of those books that I read in my 20s, but I've had not only in my physical bookshelf now, but also as a child. You'll notice that it's an advanced copy. That's because my parents work in the printing industry and sometimes they used to get advanced copies of books. I'm pretty sure this is from back in like 2006. I was like 12 years old and my parents thought like I would enjoy reading this, which I absolutely did not. Ended up reading it in my 20s, enjoyed it a lot. I need to put this into my database and probably give it like five stars. I really liked it. The next three are a bundle that I bought on Amazon with my classics, and that is three Ernest Hemingway books. I don't know what it is about Ernest Hemingway. I never read a book by him, but that's what we're gonna do now. I think I've read The Movable Feast, but that's kind of a mystery. So these three are A Farewell to Arms by Ernest Hemingway. This is the one I wanted to buy, but Amazon recommended me the other two books that also have beautiful covers and kind of look similar. So I had to do it. <laughs> so the next one is For Whom the Bell Tolls, which I am excited to read. Also love that cover. And The Sun Also Rises. The next one is The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller, which I am so excited to read because I enjoyed Circe so much, also by the same author. I love her writing style. I am so sure I'm gonna love this because everyone is loving it. And I just know it. I just know it. I, I can't explain it. The next one is one I'm currently reading, and that is Truman Capote's In Cold Blood, one of the classics that I bought as well. And you may notice I already have some annotations inside. And actually, this is the first time that I am really making sure I'm reading physical books over like Kindle books and making annotations physically. So I bought a ton of book tags uh, to help me with that. And I'm also going to put those annotations inside of Notion. Next one is also one I'm reading, and this is kind of a sin because I'm reading two books at once and that always backfires on me, but Christopher Isherwood's Goodbye to Berlin. This one is one I've always wanted to read. It's been on my bookshelf for so long, never picked it up. In fact, it's been in the background of my videos for a long time, 2022. And this one, which I'm also really excited to read because it's a mystery thriller. And that's The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelides or Michaelides. This is one of those books that 
is 100% up my alley. I'm so excited to read it, and I love the cover. All right, we're on to the second pile, which is pretty impressive. I think we got through the first one pretty quick. Hamlet and Hamnet. So this is a duo. These are two that I bought. Again, everyone's loving Hamnet. It's on everyone's list, so I have to get it and I have to read it. Bundled with that is Hamlet. By the way, Hamnet's by Maggie O'Farrell, and it says it's a novel of the plague. Now Hamnet, just by the cover, I assume is like William Shakespeare's son, Hamnet, who died of the bubonic plague. Um, but no, apparently by the summaries, it's mostly focusing on William's wife. In addition to that book, of course, I'm gonna get Hamlet by William Shakespeare. Gonna read that this year. The next is another popular one I'm seeing a lot, and that is The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. And I really like the cover. I don't know what it's about. I'm excited to find out though. The next is, oh, The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. This is from college. I'm probably not gonna put this in my Notion bookshelf. It is a very thin short story. The next is Irina's Children by Tiller J. Mazio. This is one I've already read. I read it a little while ago, actually. Um, not in my Notion bookshelf. Really sad, really good book. Probably gonna give it like four stars. The next is kind of ironic, but How to Read a Book by Mortimer J. Adler and Charles Van Doren. This is an older book. Um, I know some people actually read this in high school. It's really good for understanding how to read books more intelligently. I am gonna put that in my bookshelf and probably give it four stars. Anyway, so the next one is The Secret Life of Bees, a novel by Sue Monk Kidd. This is one of those that have been on my physical bookshelf for a long time, never got around to reading it. Look, there's a big pile of books I want to read in 2022, but let's be real, it's already March and I'm only on the first two. So a lot of these are gonna bleed into 2023. The next one is Susanna Clarke's Pyrenees. This is one of those books that looks like it would be very, very interesting to me and that I would really enjoy it. One of my friends actually read it and said it was uh, sort of written in an interesting, different way. I don't know if that's gonna be off-putting to me, but I am excited to read it. The next is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern, also recommended by my friend. And also one of those books I probably wouldn't pick up by the cover. Excited to read it though. The next one I have read, and this is Gabrielle Garcia Marquez's 100 Years of Solitude. Another classic. Uh, if you're into magical realism, I recommend. If you're into a slow burn, this is definitely a slow burn. I mean, just judging by the title, 100 Years of Solitude. This is one of those books I might even reread this year because I want to slow down with my reading. I'm going to put this in my bookshelf, probably give it a four star. The next is Emma by Jane Austen, my favorite Jane Austen book. This is not in my bookshelf. I'm going to give it five stars, actually. Really into that one. SPQR, also a book I have read. I haven't really read it, but I've tagged really interesting passages inside of it. It's one of those books you kind of flip through. And it is A History of Ancient Rome by Mary Beard. This is also a popular one for the past few years now. And yeah, I'm gonna put this in my library, probably give it a four star, of course. The next is my only self-help book because I'm leaving self-help books in 2019, 2020 era. It was kind of cringy. We're moving on from that. But this is a self-help book that I recommend and it is Algorithms to Live By, The Computer Science of Human Decisions by Brian Christian and Tom Griffiths. This is a very interesting book. It's also one of those books you can just flip through and learn something new and interesting in almost every passage. Highly recommend. This is going in my bookshelf. All right, last pile. This is hopefully not a huge video. <laughs> I still have to give you a tour of my Notion workspace, but we're gonna get there. Okay, so let's start with these three, actually. We can get three out of the way. This is a trilogy, the African Trilogy by Chinua Achibi. This is a trilogy I've always wanted to tackle but never have. So I ordered actually the next two books 
on Amazon. The first one is Things Fall Apart. This was really popular and I did read it and I give it four stars. I'm gonna read Arrow of God and No Longer at Ease in the same series. The next one is The Odyssey by Homer. This is definitely not one I'm reading this year and is from college as well. So that's not going in my bookshelf. This one, Howard's End by E.M. Forster. Look, it looks really boring to me. I think it got mixed up with books while I was moving from my childhood home. And it does look, yeah, it doesn't look very interesting, but maybe I'll give it a try in 2022. The next one is Herman Hess Demian. This is one I've always wanted to read. This was part of my classics Amazon order 2022. This is a book by Colleen Hoover Verity. Colleen Hoover is huge on everyone's list and all the lists I look at on every website I go on. <laughs> Colleen Hoover. And I figured I gotta read something by her and I went through all the descriptions of all of her popular books and figured this one is one that I'd probably like the most. Let me know if I made a bad choice about my first Colleen Hoover book, but I'm excited to read it and figure out what all the hype's about. The next is The God of Small Things by Arundhati Roy. Another classic. This was on my bookshelf, but I never got around to reading it. 2022. A Movable Feast by Ernest Hemingway. This is also one that was on my physical bookshelf. I don't know if I read it, but likely if I'm to tell myself or be confused about if I read a book or not, it's likely that I have not read it. So since I've bought three other Ernest Hemingway books, I guess I'm gonna read a fourth. It's gonna be a Hemingway year. The next one is The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde, another classic. Never read it, gonna read it. This is set obviously in New York City, A Tree Grows in Brooklyn by Betty Smith. So I very much bought this for the cover. It's also a classic, so I'm gonna read it. It's a bit thick, which is daunting, but I'm excited to get into it. Okay, so the next one is one that's also been on my bookshelf. It has got a lot of awards. It's The Sympathizer by Viet Nhan, and this is also one of those books that's like, am I ever gonna read this? And you know what? I may not read it in 2022, but eventually I will read it. That's going in my Notion bookshelf. And the last two, let's just do these two together. These are the last two classics from that Amazon order. Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte, never read it. And Voltaire's Candide, also never read it. Although it may have been one of those books I read in college, but I forget reading. That's also gonna be for 2022. Okay. We're done looking at all of the 40 books. I'm going to input all of these into Notion and I'll come back to you probably in like 24 hours with my updated Notion library template, which is gonna be available to duplicate down below in addition to my original Notion bookshelf template. So it's been about 10 hours and I'm finally done inputting all of my books into Notion. And here is what my 2022 bookshelf is looking like. So this is actually from my original template called Simple Bookshelf, which is already available to copy. And, and this essentially just has two different databases, one for genres up here, like historical fiction, memoir, nonfiction, and the bookshelf down below that connects to it. And you'll also notice that I rolled up some cover images from the books to make these genre cards more interesting to look at. So that's what we're working with. All I did was sort of customize this original template. So all the properties in these databases already exist in the original. So my homepage looks like this. I have three different blocks in callouts, one for annotation key, latest annotations and active books. So my annotation key is giving me a cue for when I go and read the book physically and what tags I wanna use in the book 
or what type of annotations. For example, black tag would be like a negative thing I noticed in the book, something that irked me. Red, thematic reference. Orange for setting. Yellow for symbolism. Green for sentence structure or just a passage I really enjoyed. Blue for vocabulary. Purple for external reference. So not thematic, but something referenced outside of the book like another book or a movie, and pink for the author's perspective. So this is a list of all the latest annotations I've made to whatever books I'm annotating. So the filter here is there is a property in annotations called created time, which is just a timestamp that is within the past week or today. So this is all my annotations from the past week. We'll pile in here. And then my active books is a linked database to my bookshelf. And right now, like I said before, I'm now reading Goodbye to Berlin and In Cold Blood. And we'll get into all that. I have four different databases here. The original only had a bookshelf and genres. This I've added annotations, of course, and a literary atlas. So when I go and input the setting for a book, it will populate an atlas. So let's start at my bookshelf. I'm deciding to use dark mode. So Notion has a new updated dark mode that looks like this. And I think it looks so much better. I know there are still issues with the colors, but I think for databases, it just pops so much more for me. So this is just a general table of all the books. And you'll notice some of the properties here, like I said, started and ended. When I started and ended reading the book, these are date properties. I have a cover image, which is a files and media property, where I went online and just found the cover of the book and inputted it in there. I also have a rating column where I go and rate the book when I'm finished. The author is also a drop down menu that I can add to over time. And genres, which is a relation property to my genres database. And of course, the name of the book. So this is the plain table, but I also have other database views. If I go to table, go down to gallery, and this is just all of the cover images. So let's click on cold blood. Whenever you click on a database item, there will be a preview window. So don't open it up as a page. You can shift through books with these arrows, which is pretty cool. This is a book I'm currently reading. Some of the properties for each book are the cover, of course, like I said, files and media property here, files and media. You can find a list of property types by clicking on the title of the property. So I have the image of the book that I found online. That's nice and crisp, so my gallery view looks nice. The year it was published, the author in a drop down menu that you can add to, the genre, which you can also add to. This is inside. You'll see here in the genres database. Summary, I just got that from Goodreads. The setting, which is going to settings. Holcomb, Kansas. Country, I have a drop down menu of what country this place is in. The book it's related to will happen automatically when I create that setting. And then an image inside the body of the page. And this flower icon will also show up upon clicking the template, which I'll show you right now. So upon creating a new page, every single page in every database here has a template option. So this is new place, you'll see that flower icon. If you click on it, it will give you not only the flower icon, but also an image to add with an image block. For genre, it's the same thing whenever you create a new genre through a book page or any, even through the database, it does give you an option to click a template that gives you this nice flower image and a list of books that associate with that genre, which will add up over time. Of course, I also have you started and ended date property, which if you click on it, you'll get an option to go through a calendar and pick a date. If started, I started this book on February 24th, is filled out and ended is not filled out. Come down here to the hidden properties, you'll see that active is now checked on. If I were to finish this today on the 27th, it will be ticked off. 
Also, if you go down to Hidden, and this is part of a series of books, you can create a new drop-down menu option for the name of the series. And then, of course, a rating when you're finished. So what I have here is a board view linked from my annotations database. And if I click on the title, I can navigate right to the original. But basically, under each column, I can pick if the annotations for vocabulary, story setting, sentence structure, external reference. And down below, my annotation key from a synced block is in here as well. So if you are duplicating this as a template, you can just change your annotation key in the home page and it will update everywhere else in the template. And I'll make a note of that in the template as well. I also have a key for my chapters. So I'm making a list of chapters and then I'm highlighting them certain colors if I liked them or not from poor to great. This will help me pick an overall rating when I'm done reading. I'm gonna click into one of these annotations. Let's go with this one. You'll notice that the entire annotation is the title of the database entry. And there is a template for this as well. And you can choose what type of annotation, the book it's from, but if you're in the books page, it will automatically connect to that book, the chapter, the page, and the paragraph on that page. I'm gonna go back to my bookshelf page and show you another database view. So I also have another view to group books by date. So looking at that started date, that's what it's grouped by. So I can see based upon month and year in neat toggle. So these are all the books I have not started. January, 2021, I've read two books, February, 2021, one, and so on. And it'll keep going down the list here in neat toggles which I think is a great way to group this data. And if you wanna know how to group, there should always be an option for your database. If you don't see the toggle or the button group, you can go to your database menu here and find it. Basically, upon this button, I'm grouping by a date property, which in this case is the date property started. And when I click it, I have a few options. I can choose group by day, week, month, which is what I'm grouping by here, or year. The next database view is grouped by rating, that five star rating. And all of it's colored. And what I'm viewing through these cards, if I go to properties, is the summary. So that's this text here. And in grouping, you'll notice that they are colored in the background. I can toggle on and off color columns. So let's go on to another database, which is the genres. So I'm able to create genres, like you saw, through the book pages. You notice there was a relation property where I could both add and select existing genres from the genres database in the genres, which is here. So I have a few database views here as well. I have one that is a table and we have the name like classics, genre, all of the books associated, all of the cover images, which is collecting automatically in the background, number of books also collecting automatically, percentage of finished books in this genre and number of active books. So what I mean by automatically happening in the background, for example, finding these covers, is if you create a new property by clicking on the title of the property after adding a new one, going down to advanced and clicking roll up, that's where I'm getting it. All you need for a roll up to work is to have a relation property to another database. In this case, genres is already connected to books. So you can create new roll ups from this template as well. What I do is configure the roll up select my relation, which is books, the only one here, and go to property and find the property from my bookshelf that I want to bring in to genres. And I'm selecting cover, which is a files and media property. And then calculate is just show original. Let's go on to the next database view, which is just gallery. So this is a lot like the bookshelf I have for each one Let's go to classics. I have 
all of those properties there, of course. And at the bottom, after clicking that template, you're gonna get a list that will update over time of all of your books in that genre. All right, so we're done with the genres. And let's look at annotations. So in annotations, like you saw, you have to go into the book page down in the body of the page to add new annotations, but you could also add annotations from here. So my first view is grouped by book. And really, now I can toggle down each book that has annotations in it. So Goodbye to Berlin has two and I can add another one here and it will automatically connect to this book as well. Grouped by type. This is the type of annotation and I do not have the background color toggled here. So different ways to look at those annotations. And then the last one is the literary atlas. So this is one I was really excited about um, where I go into each book and when I go and select a setting, it automatically populates this database because it's connected to it. And I can go to England, for instance, and see all of the books here via my relation property that are set in England. That image here, that's the image that's showing up in the gallery card. You'll see there's also a selection. Let me see one that is a fictional place. So you can toggle on fictional. and include those. Another database view is grouped by country because there is a selection to click what country this place is in. So just a ton of different ways to group data and back to the homepage. I'm not gonna do an outro, but I'll do an outro right here in my little bubble. And I'll let you know that of course, this template is available to duplicate down below. In addition to my original template that this is based off of, I'm gonna link down my 2022 dashboard tour as well. And to get a look at how I've incorporated this into a dashboard in my homepage for all of my workspace. And I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm gonna see you guys the rest of the week on Twitter and next time with a new video. I'll see you then.